Hi, I am Selva Prabhakaran. In this one, we will try to understand decile analysis using logistic regression. Now, this is a very popular technique used by data scientists and statisticians working for marketing teams, particularly when working on a marketing campaign. Let's try to understand this with a very clear marketing campaign based example with Python code also subsequently. Now, say you plan to launch a marketing campaign to increase sales, of course. Now, you have a fixed budget and you want to get the best ROI possible. You have data for 10,000 subscribers, 10,000 customers. Some of them have purchased and some of them have not purchased. Now, amongst this set of 10,000 customers in your data, who are the customers you are going to target first? So, this is the problem statement. As always, we will start with the data set. Now, let's assume we have data set where each row in the data set corresponds to a single customer. So every row here corresponds to a customer ID, ID 1, ID 2, ID 3, so on and so forth. You have the basic customer details and at the end, you also know which among these customers have purchased in the past. So this, this customer is purchased, not purchased, purchased, not purchased and so on. Now, whenever you are building a logistic regression or any, any classification algorithm, what would typically happen is, say you are training, you are training a machine learning model to predict Y as a function of X, what it would give is the predicted value of Y, which typically will either be 0 or 1 directly. 1 means the person has purchased, 0 means has not purchased. But what happens internally is, the machine learning algorithm, whichever model you are using, here we are most commonly dealing with logistic regression. Right? So we will stick this case to logistic regression. So logistic regression is going to make predictions of probability scores, not just 1s and zeros. It will give you the exact probability scores and by default, we keep a cutoff of 0 0.5. Any score above the value of 0 0.5, we are going to mark it as 1. And below 0 0.5, it can be marked, it will be by default marked as 0. Now, consider a case where the predicted probability scores are given like this. 0 0.1, 0 0.49, 0 0.51, 0 0.9. Four different people and these are the probability scores. Now, what the model will by default predict is, this guy or this person will be predicted as 0 because this is lesser than 0 0.5. This will also be predicted as 0. This will be predicted as 1. This will be predicted as 1. This is 0. B is 0 and C is predicted as 1. They are poles apart. This is 0 but this is 1. But if you look at the probability scores, if you look at these scores, the scores are very close to each other. So if we do, if we go by this method of marking it as either 0 and 1, we would miss this nuance that there is very close probability that both B and C could have converted to, to paid customers. Alternately, what might also happen is it could turn out that this person did not convert, this person got converted, this also got converted, this also got converted. Now in this case, by default, this guy, this person would have, would have been predicted as 0, but by changing the cutoff from 0 0.5 to a, to a lower score, we could have predicted this customer as 1, isn't it? So by doing, by adjusting the probability cutoff, it is possible to get a better accuracy for your models. Now coming back to the topic of decile analysis, let's try to understand how to do that using code. Let's start by loading up all the packages, pandas, numpy, train test split, we know, to split the training and testing data sets. We are going to be using logistic regression. This is for plotting, matplotlib and seaborn. I will be providing the link to this notebook in the description. You can definitely try it out, but don't get started just yet. Complete the, com completely understand the concepts fully and then you can start working. So we are going to be using the bank data set. This is how the data set looks like. Each row here is a customer. Each row is a customer. We have the age, job, marital status, education and so on and so forth. And towards the end, we know which, which of these customers got converted. Now here, the first, very first five customers did not get converted. So that the value here is no. Next, we are defining the categorical variables separately so that we can do one hot encoding on top of these variables alone. Next, we create the X data set, the, the features and the Y data set. Then we create the training and test data using train test split. But before doing this, we are doing one hot encoding using pd.getdummies. So this is done. The X data is available. Using this X, we are splitting it into train and test. Then we train the logistic regression model and this is the part where the model training happens. Then once the model is trained, we use predict proba to get the probability scores. So this is nothing but the probability that the respective rows y value equals to 1. 
that probability equals to is stored in these these numbers finally we put the actual and the predicted values predicted probability scores in one single data frame called results now based on this results data this is what we need in order to do the decile analysis once this part is done we are now ready to do the decile analysis now the very first step in decile analysis is we will sort the data so we have the actual y and the predicted probability scores so with this this is what is stored in the results data set results data frame results right so we will take this we will sort this data based on the predicted probability scores so after sorting it will look like this so we have the predicted scores and the actuals the probability scores go in descending order here descending order throughout the entire data set now after doing this what we do is we split this entire data in 10 10 equal size parts we call these parts as deciles that is why the name decile analysis comes from in the first place right so here we are we are having lesser number of observations now imagine there are lot many more observations in this particular column so we will split them into equally sized 10 different 10 different equally sized buckets so suppose if there are 10000 rows if there are 10000 rows each of this rows if the each of these buckets will have 1000 1000 observations this will have 1000 observations this will have 1000 observations this will have 1000 observations so on and so forth now remember this we will take this table and apply that this concept in python code so here it is this is the this is the table after we create those buckets this contains the entire set of calculations let's start one by one so this table is called the gains table the gains table all right and the deciles that we talked about is stored in the rank column we can call this as deciles deciles all right the first decile we are calling it as number 9 8 7 6 0 1 and so forth till 0 you can call it as 1 2 3 4 like this also we will we will typically name it all right so here it is named as 9 8 7 we will typically name it as 1 2 3 4 5 6 till till 10 so we have these buckets now in each bucket we are capturing suppose in each bucket we know that in here 1 2 3 6 observations exist in each of these buckets each of these buckets 1 2 some of the buckets 1 2 3 5 is present but all of these buckets is approximately equally sized now in each of these buckets each of these deciles we calculate what is the total number of ones that is the responders or people who have converted we sum up all the ones and write it here and that would be the number of response responses this 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 number of responders is the actual based on the actual way i calculate the number of actual responders in each of these buckets then we compute the response rate so response rate this value is nothing but 770 770 divided by 1 2 3 6 likewise we do this for all the all the rows over here now if you look at this the response rate for the topmost buckets here the response rate will be the highest second bucket it will have a slightly lower response rate and so on and so forth now if suppose you are doing decile analysis and you observe that in this table this response rate is not continuously decreasing suppose this this response rate was 0.30 and this response rate was 0.40 and this response rate was say 0.15 and this guy's response rate was say 45.45 now if this kind of a thing happens with your model you can right away tell that there is something incorrect happening something fishing happening here with your model and you need to check your model what's happening what should ideally happen is the topmost bucket will have the highest response rate can you tell why because we have descending sorted the entire probability scores so the topmost buckets will have the highest probability scores if this is not having the highest response rates then your probability scores are having a problem now once we have that we also compute the cumulative response which is nothing but say here we have we are starting with 770 the next observation would be 770 plus 377 the next observation will be the sum of all these three so on and so forth so we get the we compute the cumulative response we also compute the cumulative response rates also so it starts with 0.55 0.82 so on and so forth till it reaches 100 percentage what is interesting about this by looking at it just by targeting the first two buckets suppose you are running an ad campaign and you by targeting just this portion of the population out just 20 percentage of the population you target you are able to get 82 percentage of the total converters possibly entire data out of all the people who would convert 
we are able to target and capture 82 percentage of all the converters so by looking at your expenses you might choose to not even target the rest of the population at all for the rest of your campaign now that is a decision you as a marketer can take considering the budget you have at hand finally we have the lift scores what is the lift suppose we are going for random targeting so by targeting one of the buckets this is containing 10 percentage of the entire population right so the conversion rate also should be 10 percent right out of all the suppose, suppose there are 100 converters 100 people who would respond you would expect 10 percentage of the people to respond by targeting targeting a population right now assuming 10 percentage response rate here we are here typically we would get 10 percentage response rate likewise if we target this to this top 20 percentage we would be able to get 20 percentage response rate likewise 30 percentage of the people if you target will be able to cover 30 percentage of all the responders etc and so on and so forth here our expectation is we should be able to capture all out of all only 10 percentage of the responders but we are able to capture 55 percentage of all the responders so the lift here is 0.55 by 10 percentage which gives you this this kind of a lift likewise the lift for the second observation is 0.8 2.8257 divided by 20 percentage which would give you this number likewise this number divided by 30 percentage this number divided by 40 percentage so on and so forth so finally this is your gains table a better way to visualize the gains table the the outcome of the gains table is what is called the gains chart by targeting by targeting 20 percentage of the people we would expect this much conversion but we got this much of conversion so the more the gap between the orange line and the blue line this is the orange line is the expectation blue line is what the model is able to achieve so wider this gap more effective is your model at capturing the responders so this is the crux of design analysis i will leave a link to this notebook and the data set in the description you can take that and try it out on your own next time we will meet with another very interesting concept